Hello, everyone. Today's devotional reading will be from the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 15 through 19, where it is written. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. The second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go wherever you wished. When you grow old, you'll stretch out your hands, and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. So he said this to indicate the kind of death by which he will glorify God. And to this he said to him, Follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In this moment, Peter is reconciled to Jesus Christ. Now, the word reconciliation is based on the Latin word cilia, or in English, which is their word for an eyelash. So reconciliation, reconciliation is to bring someone eyelash to eyelash. That's what the literal meaning behind the word is. To make us that close, we're eyelash to eyelash. At one point, that was true, Jesus said, Peter, they're at the Last Supper, and Peter says, Lord, if every other apostle bans you, I'll die with you. A few hours later, Peter completely uh, blows it. So Jesus saying, you denied me three times. So now, Peter, what can I do to reconcile us? Oh, I know. I'll have him publicly declare your love for me three times. And they're reconciled. And not just Peter, of course. All the apostles uh, fled. And they all became, well, save Judas. They all were restored as apostles. In fact, all but one died a martyr's death. They failed. And Jesus said his great love forgave them and restored them. And there's hope. If someone, like even the apostles, can fail and be forgiven and restored, that means me, you, everyone. We can make the same mistakes. We can do the things the apostles did and deny Jesus Christ and flee. But when we repent, as the apostles repent, we're forgiven. Just as Peter, uh, Jesus restored Peter, we can be restored. We can walk away from God and curse him and do ugh, stuff. And if we remain unrepentantly, Judas will share Judas' fate. But if, like Peter, we repent, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, we will be forgiven. We will be restored. Sincere repentance is what's needed. Now, on our own, we can't do that. But Jesus comes to every heart, as far as I'm concerned. In God becoming human, the actions then of Jesus Christ apply to all humans. Everyone has a chance to repent, turn to Jesus, and live. Now, will everyone? I hope so, but of course, I honestly can't guarantee that. Some people inevitably won't. But don't let that be you. Paul or Peter repent, be forgiven, and be restored. Now, I grant you, you can say no, but why? What else are you going to do? Repent, turn to Jesus, and live is the only way to go forward. It's the only way to truly have life. That's that. Let us close with prayer. Lord, forgive us. And Lord, come to the depths of our heart. Please, please bring us to true and sincere repentance. We may be forgiven, restored to you, and live. Amen.